Okay, so let's move for the for the animation itself. Um, okay, I, I can now that everything is in place, I can hide the the grid. Um, yeah, so we're basically we're going to use the timeline um, to to animate our uh, different states of the animation. So later on in DPR we can use the the state machine to trigger the animations when when we want it. So in this case we're going to have two animations. Um, uh, open uh, open leads animation the, the the first animation that will open and reveal the face and the second one that will close uh, that will close the helmet so uh, first of all we need to think about how roughly this animation is going to last we're going to make sure that we are playing under 24 frame per second or the, the measure that you like um, in this case yes so uh, this is this is a, a time reference for me. Um, I know that 24 frames are one second, so we can go from there. So I would say this is a pretty fast, a pretty quick animation. Um, I would say like maybe 30 frames would be enough. Uh, so I will set 30 here. Um, in a, at any time I can add or uh, this is just a, a, a rough estimation, so we can. So we can always go and, and change this if, if we need. Um, so let's start to to the first frame. We want to make sure that the first frame uh, is the, the exactly same pose as the last one, so it's loopable. Um, so let's start uh, to, for deciding which parts I'm going. Uh, they are going to be animated. The ones that I'm going to press keyframes on on them. So in this case, everything is, is is organized already. So I want to make sure that I'm going only to to press keyframes on the these groups, in the lead groups, the main lead, the secondary lead, and the shin lead. So let's select through those three. We want to make sure they are they don't have any kind of they are all zeroed out. Everything is so perfect. Yeah, so let's select these three. I'm going to press S. So I just set the first keyframe, and I want to make sure the last one is also the same, the same pose. Again, if we want to stretch this, we, we can always move things around. Uh, in this case, if I press Shift and I middle uh, and I, I click the middle mouse of the the middle button of the, of the mouse, and then I, I, I can drag this. Or if I have like this animation, I can shift select all of this and I can stretch it. So and I can go, of course, I can go to the, um, I can always go to the graph editor and have a lot of control there. So yeah, we have our first and our final frame already. So let's go ahead and let's go for something somewhere in the middle, frame 15. And let's uh, work on the final uh, pose of the open of the open um, pose. So here we have our dense mesh that is going. That it was used as a reference, and it's also going to be used. Uh, we are going also use it as a. Um, uh, it's going to be a mesh where our face is going to be print on top of this. So when the lid is open, we can see our face. So this is going to be important too. Right now the shader. Is not the right one. Let's supply this shader. Let's call this dense mesh shader just to keep things nice. Okay, so going back to our animation. So mm, again, I'm not sure how the Iron Man helmet works. Um, it's not really important. So I would say it opens. This is the the maximum position. Okay, so I'm going to press S. The secondary lead, I can do something like this. Okay, it's fully open. Again, in the sheen, I'm going to say that this is it. I'm going to press S. So now we have this pose. Okay, great. If we play the timeline, you can see it's already opening, and then from here it starts to close again. It's important to uh, 
we, we uh, sadly we cannot reverse the animation so if you want something to open and close even though it looks the same reversed you you really want to to animate it both ways okay so now um so now let's play let's play this just to see uh, how is it looking so yeah I think it looks good. Uh, sometimes the the, um, the the better way to understand how the, the animation is looking, sometimes the um, the viewport is is not very precise because it depends on the processor working. Um, we can go to Windows and press Play Blast, and it will it will generate a, a really fast uh, render. So we can take a look at, at the rendered scene already. So yeah, so let's let's make this a bit more interesting. So we're going to have uh, some some weight to the movement. Right now it's very linear, so we we, we can go to the um, to the graph editor. Um, but for this kind of animation, uh, I really like to keep it simple, and I I really want to 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 do it here in the timeline. So yeah, let's say that this this bit. It's going to, to take a while, so yeah, for these two first frames, they will take longer, so it's like an ease in the animation, and then this pose here is going to be faster. So, yeah, so it looks more like it has some weight and some mechanics to it. Um, and then here, I'm going to make a little rebound, a little small animation like this. Okay, again, I'm not happy with this. I'm going to move this. So yeah, right now the the middle is on frame 17. So I'm going to move this two and this two. Okay, so now I want to work on follow-through animation. I'm going to this one, and I'm going to make sure that yep, this is this will have like a hard time following the main movement. And here, more extreme okay so it, it looks a bit better now so let's do the same thing for the shin so let's say that it's an easy kind of thing so it really takes long to open but then it goes super fast. Exactly. And now let's make the follow through the rebound animation. I'm going to copy this one. <coughs> I'm going to paste it. So they are the same. And now I'm going to make it a bit higher. Okay, so right now we have this really cool animation. And we, we have to keep in mind that at the frame 17 we're going to freeze this. So it, it will not start closing right away, so we have to keep this in mind. So for example, I'm going to press 17 here. I'm going to to make a, a play blast so we can take a look at how this is looking. Okay. Looks interesting. So let's let's work on the um, the closing animation. So right now I'm going to do the same technique. Make this um, let's make this look like it's 
it, it, it's getting hard to start the movement. Uh, like the mechanisms are starting to 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 making pressure to, to applying the force. So the, the the first bit of the movement is a bit slower, and then it it goes faster. So let's go here, and then let's move this forward. And now I'm going to add maybe four frames. So at this stage, I really want to make this super fast. Okay. I'm going to copy this. To make it a bit in, out, Not so much. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's work on the, um, the follow through on the secondary lead. So something like this. And here I'm going to make this I'm going to break it, but since it's super fast. I'm not going to see it in here. Want to move this back a little bit exactly. So maybe not so extreme. Okay. Frame, the frame. So now it's going to go out a little bit. Going to be in just a little bit. Okay. Okay. Let's let's make this. Let's finish this animation with the with the shin. Actually, I like, yeah, to make a little bit of contrast, let's make the shin super linear, super, like it's, like it's a different kind of mechanism. I, I, I like the, the weight when it's going down, because the gravity will help the mechanism, but going up, it's going to be more tough, so let's make this super linear. Yeah, I like it like this. Let, Let's make just a simple rebound here, like going in, going out, just a little, yeah. Okay, so let's see how this is how, how this is looking. So for seventeen, play blast. So the closing animation, awesome. Okay, just one final bit of the animation here to give it a little bit more of life. Uh, let's go crazy with this here pad just a little. Um, sometimes are those small details that help to sell the idea uh, of a credible animation. So um, yeah, let's make sure that those here pads they recoil a little bit. They they feel the 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 pressure. They feel the you, you can feel the. Um, the impact in these little pieces. So I'm going to press S here, and here is the impact. So we want to make the we want to make it one frame later or two, because it's the time that the force will travel until this area. I'm going to press S, and then S here, and now here I'm going to just move this a little bit. Should be enough. Yeah, maybe a little bit of scaling, just a little. Okay, so 
So let's take a look at this. Yep. <clears throat> we can make this a bit more. We can exaggerate this just a little bit more. And now we can make it offset. So it's a bit more interesting. Put a look. So play blast. Yep. So just this final touch to the animation. So yeah, so the, the animation is, is complete. Our model is complete. Um, the, it, it's in the right place. So we have everything to 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 move this to to Deeper Studio, to Deep AR Studio. Right now, I'm going to make sure that I know my two states of this animation. It's from frame one to frame seventeen, and from frame seventeen to the frame thirty-four. We have to keep this in this in mind because the, we're going to use seconds. So we may we, we might want to to do a, a, a little math to to understand where things are. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and export this. Um, okay, this is not the shader, this is the mesh itself. And then the shader is this one, so a little error here. Mesh shader. Okay, let's make sure that we move this back to zero. If, if we forget to, to do it, it's not a problem, because inside the PR Studio, you can you can go to the to the options and you can you, you can zero this out. But uh, let's make this super clean. Let's save this first, uh, and let's export the selection. So uh, in the outliner, you 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 shift select um, things using the command. So I select this command, select this, and I'm going to export selection. In this case, we are, we want animation. It goes from one to thirty-four, so that's cool. We want to resample because this is going this is going to 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 press keyframes on all the frames. So we want to make sure that our curves are, are right. The animation looks good. Um, yeah, and then we want to make sure that we are working with FBX two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve. It doesn't really matter for this uh, binary mode. Um, so let's let's go ahead and rewrite this file. Okay. So uh, let's jump ahead to the to DPR to understand how we could trigger these animations and let's try our our helmet.